Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you the difference between the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor in less than 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off by first looking at the neuron, and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in at the synaptic terminal. Now inside the synaptic terminal, we have vesicles packaged with neurotransmitters, and these vesicles are going to be stored at the active zones. Now in order to release the neurotransmitters, we have to have a signal, and the signal is going to originate from voltage-gated sodium channels. Now as action potentials propagate down the axon, voltage-gated sodium channels open, allowing sodium to flow into the cell, which will depolarize the synaptic terminal, which will therefore open voltage-gated calcium channels, increasing the intracellular calcium level, which will therefore facilitate the fusion of the vesicle with the presynaptic membrane, allowing the release of neurotransmitters into the synapse. Now the neurotransmitter that we're gonna be focusing on today is glutamate once again. And remember that glutamate can bind to three different receptors, but the two main receptors that it will bind to are the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor. Now in my previous video, we talked in great detail about what the AMPA receptor was and what its effects are when glutamate bound to it. Now in order to understand this video, you have to have a good understanding of the AMPA receptor. So if you don't know what the AMPA receptor is or what its effects are, please go see my previous video in my channel. It's only like around seven minutes, so it's not gonna take too much of your time. So let's now take a look at the two receptors, the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor. Now what we're going to focus on is basically their effects on the membrane potential when they open. And we're going to be looking at their effects at two different cell po membrane potentials. The first membrane potential we're going to be looking at is when the cell is starting off at negative 70 millivolts. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the relative level of depolarization that the open channels will cause when glutamate binds to it. So let's look at the AMPA receptor first. So this right here shows the contribution of the AMPA receptor to the membrane potential. And what we see here is that when the AMPA receptor opens, which would be around right here, the AMPA receptor will facilitate an inwards depolarizing current, which would therefore cause the cell to depolarize. And then once glutamate leaves the synapse or diffuses out of the synapse or gets broken down, the AMPA receptor will start to close, which will cause the cell to go back to the resting potential. So what would we expect for the NMDA receptor? So this blue line is showing you the NMDA receptor when it opens. And the first thing that you should note is that the NMDA receptor opens more slowly than the AMPA receptor. The second thing that you should note is that the NMDA receptor, like the AMPA receptor, also causes a depolarization at this membrane potential. However, the relative contribution to the membrane potential is going to be less. In other words, the NMDA receptor, when it's open, will depolarize the cell less than the AMPA receptor when it's open at this particular membrane potential. So now let's take a look at the relative contributions of the two open receptors at a more depolarized membrane potential. And this membrane potential will be around negative 30 millivolts. So let's take a look at the relative contribution of each open receptor. So this green line once again shows the AMPA receptor. And what you see, should see here is that the depolarization caused by the opening of the AMPA receptor is less in this cell when it's negative 30 millivolts than it was at the resting potential of negative 70 millivolts. And this is because we are approaching the reversal potential. Remember that when the re remember that the reversal potential for the AMPA receptor is around zero millivolts. And when we're below that reversal potential of zero millivolts, so in other words, when we're more negative, the AMPA receptor, when it's open, will cause the cell to depolarize. And as we get more and more negative, the net inward current will basically increase, which will therefore cause an increase in the level of depolarization. So as we approach the level of zero millivolts in the cell and become less negative, the net inward current will decrease, and therefore there will be less depolarization caused by the AMPA receptor. Now the NMDA receptor also has a reversal potential of zero millivolts. So what we would expect before we see the results is a similar sort of thing, that the inward current would decrease through the NMDA receptor, so therefore the level of depolarization caused by the opening, opening of this receptor would decrease as well. So what do we really see when we do this experiment? 
So what we see in this experiment is actually contrary to our expectations. What we see in this cell compared to the more negative cell is that the net inward current through the NMDA receptor in this slightly depolarized cell is actually greater than it was when the cell, than when the cell was at rest. So what is going on here? Well, in order to understand what is going on, we have to look at the NMDA receptor itself. So here is the postsynaptic cell, and here is the NMDA receptor. Now, like the AMPA receptor, the NMDA receptor is going to be a tetramer. It has four subunits, and each of these subunits has a binding site for glutamate. And when glutamate binds to its binding site on a subunit, it opens a gate. So therefore, when the more glutamates that bind to an NMDA receptor, the more gates that are open and the greater the current passing through it. So the NMDA receptor will pass the maximum amount of current when four glutamates are bound to it. So when this NMDA receptor is open, what is the effects? Well, like the AMPA receptor, the effects are going to largely be determined by the membrane potential. However, unlike the AMPA receptor, the NMDA receptor is much more complicated. And the reason has to do with a specific ion called magnesium. So let's take a look at what I mean by this. So let's start off with a negative membrane potential of around negative 70 millivolts. And when the NMDA receptor is open, what we're going to see is that the channel is actually blocked. And the block is going to be coming from magnesium. So magnesium from the extracellular environment will be drawn into the intracellular environment due to the negative charge. But however, it will not be able to pass through the NMDA receptor completely. In other words, it sort of gets stuck inside the pore. And the reason why magnesium can, can sort of get through this NMDA receptor has to do with the fact that the NMDA receptor is actually really permeable to calcium. The NMDA receptor is much more permeable to calcium than the AMPA receptor. And since magnesium is in the same chemical group as calcium, this NMDA receptor will be able to allow magnesium to pass through it through a certain extent. Now, magnesium can't pass through all the way. It gets stuck inside the pore. So therefore, what the magnesium does at really negative membrane potentials is it acts like a cork on a bottle. It basically prevents cations from moving through this open receptor. So therefore it prevents any depolarization from occurring. And this is why we saw a, relative low, a relatively low contribution by the NMDA receptor at rest or at lower membrane potentials. Now what about when we slightly depolarize the cell? Now when we slightly depolarize the cell to a less negative point, but not at a positive point, what happens is, is the magnesium will be repelled from the NMDA receptor, reopening this receptor. And this will allow current to pass through it. Now, the ions that flow through the NMDA receptor are going to be the same ions that flowed through the open AMPA receptor. The first two will be sodium and calcium flowing down their electrical chemical gradient into the cell. Now, the main difference between the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor in this case is that the NMDA receptor is much more permeable to calcium than the AMPA receptor is. Now the ion that will be flowing out is potassium. Now the net effect of the open NMDA receptor at a negative membrane potential will be a depolarization. So now that we understand the NMDA receptor and its mechanics and the AMPA receptor and its mechanics, let us now just summarize the differences and similarities between the two. So the first similarity between the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor is that the neurotransmitter that binds to them is glutamate. Now the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor are similar in that they allow sodium, potassium, and calcium to pass through it when it's open. However, the permeability of the receptor to calcium varies between the two. Uh, receptors. The NMDA receptor, as I said before, is much more permeable to calcium than the AMPA receptor. Now the speed between these two receptors also varies. Now both of them are pretty fast in their effects. However, the AMPA receptor tends to be a little bit faster than the NMDA receptor. Now the last thing is the magnesium block. 
the NMDA receptor has a magnesium block when the cell is really hyperpolarized or at rest. And this is because the NMDA receptor is permeable, more permeable to calcium than the AMPA receptor. And since magnesium is in the same chemical group as calcium, it is sort of, it allows the magnesium to pass through it to a certain extent, but not all the way. Whereas the AMPA receptor does not have a magnesium block. So I hope this helped you understand the differences between these two receptors. And this now concludes our video series on glutamate and its effects. In our next video, we're going to be focusing in on a different type of neurotransmitter, an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter is going to be GABA. So I hope to see you there. Now, good luck on your studies, and I hope to see you next time.